doing? I hope you're well. I hope you're having a good start to your week. Um, I had a lovely, lovely run this morning. Um, it was just the right temperature. I had an ease and flow. I had some good tunes. And then I saw a dead rat on the pavement. So, you know, peaks and troughs and all of that. Uh, I jumped about five foot in the air. I did quite a big shriek and I moved on with my day. I was quite impressed with the way that I handled that. Um, but yeah, I don't know why it was there. I I hope it's not there again. Um, yeah, there we go. Today I want to talk about this week and where you go and um, maybe you've got a lot of questions at the moment in terms of being consciously aware of what's going on in the world and yet being able to feed your family, being able to do the things that you want to do and um, yet be in respect. And this for me is really important to speak about because we can, and I've seen it so often, we can be many things. And I think this sense that we can't is a really old paradigm that we need to play around with. So many big businesses, they wanted to show their respect to the passing of the queen, great. And they almost like shut down, like, okay, right, enough. Pull off the, like, stop, close the doors, that's it. And I want to say that they can do that because they have that wiggle room and because they can make that executive call. And I'm sure many businesses over the last few days have had somebody go into a room or set up an emergency Zoom and gone, right guys, right, this is what we're gonna do. This is the plan going forward. This is what we say, this is what we don't, this is what we're available for. This is our statement, etc." Many small businesses do not have that person that come in and take that lead and advisors accordingly. Because we're all out there as creatives, self-employed people, freelancers, small businesses, entrepreneurs, however you identify, we are all out there figuring it out as we go. And I always say to my clients, especially if they've gone from being employed to um, being self-employed, this is, get ready, like this is gonna be the greatest self-development journey ever. It's, it's gonna be a ride, enjoy it, let's get on, let's do it. But I firstly want to say, as a reminder, because I could rant, I could, but I'm not going to. I wanna be productive, I wanna be useful, I, I don't wanna take up too much of your time. Firstly, remember, remember as a self-employed person, as a creative, as a founder, as an entrepreneur, we are nimble, robust, and we are not uh, just one thing. The fact that we are all of these things has got us to where we want to be. So what I want to say that in terms of our values is that we can be in deep respect to the passing of a monarch, but also we can carry on with our business and help people and be mindful, be thoughtful, be discerning, but also be inspirational, be motivating, be creative, be positive, be educational, be entertaining, all of those things. And this sense that just because we chose this one particular life, we're fitting ourselves into these old systems, it doesn't work for many of us. It certainly doesn't work for many of my clients. Sometimes they'll get to a point where it's like, I've sat at my computer from nine to five and I still haven't got the answers. And for me, that's always like, we need to look at this in a different way. And suddenly, like a couple of days down the road, they might be like, I think I'm a 12 to, to eight person. I feel like I'd like to start my working day at 12 and work till eight. And I'm like, great, how would that feel? Tell me more about it. And they try it and then suddenly they find their flow. Suddenly they feel like they've, they're more grounded, that they can do the things that they want to do. I also want to say that 
many of us who choose this freelance, self-employed, entrepreneur, etc. life, we don't or can't or rarely compartmentalise things. And this old belief that when we are doing one thing, we are not doing other things at the same time, or we're not thinking about other things, I think is a complete myth. Meaning, you only have to go to, into a meditation, and I'll be sitting there really well for the first 30 seconds, and then I'll be like, what am I going to have for my dinner? What have we got in the freezer? Oh, what have, we, have I moved that thing that I put in the free? Has it gone out of date yet? My brain goes there. And also, many of us are in that creative headspace where I can be present with my child, drop him off at school, but I can also get inspired by seeing an 80-year-old person who has just started running through the park, or I can notice the season changes, or I can notice um, a mum who has maybe got two kids, one on a bike, one on a scooter, and she's got like a three-day-old baby going, this is the first time I've left my house in three days and I've now got a brand new person. We can experience all those things at the same time. The third thing I want to say is... <laughs> hmm. uh, this is when the emotion stuff comes out. This sense that we can choose or we have a backup or having your own business is like a nice to have thing. I have read so many um, posts, videos of people at the moment who are going through big life things. And one woman was like, I don't know how I'm going to pay my gas and electric off my bakery because it's tripled. It's tripled in price. I don't know how to do that. And some people I'm sure might have read it and gone, just like move some money around. Just like move some money from a department. And I think there's sometimes this understanding where people are like, there is no other department. Like this is the department and this is the money pot and this is where it goes. And so we can't operate in a way that big businesses do because we don't, we, we, it's a different thing. It's a different scenario. It's, you know, it's a car and a bus. I mean, granted, I'd rather be in the car, but you know what I mean. Um, and I, yeah, And also that sense that I know that I want to have a business for me that helps people and does different things and I walk down a local road to me and the queue for the food bank is, it, it blows my mind. Like, why why don't people have food in their fridges? Why are we in such a state that people can't eat? And I see children and grandpa, like, it's it's too much. I also see situations where people are ill or there's something that happens in their family and things have to rearrange, things have to step up. And I want to say that so often there has been a narrative, especially for women, but I know that every single person will have this own version of whatever it looks like for them, of you're not ready, or you'll be ready when. You'll be ready, and you know, I'm a child of the 80s and 90s, you'll be ready when you lose that half a stone. You'll be ready once you get that new kappa jacket, You'll be ready once that boy in the year above says you're fit. You'll be ready once you get into that university. You'll be ready once you turn 18 and you can go and buy your own drinks. Or um, when you get engaged or married or have your first child. Or You'll be ready when. And enough, 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 enough. Because you are ready now. And I think this thing, the, the conversation around being ready is that we imagine it's gonna be one destination where we almost get to the front line, um, not the front line, but the starting line. Like, I am ready now. I am ready to run my race. I've done my warm up. Um, I, I've done all of these things. But for the most part, going back to us not compartmentalizing our life, I can go into a business meeting. I can go in with a client. I can go for an audition, I can go and speak on stage to hundreds of people and in my head go, I'm ready, I've done my prep, I've done the things and all the rest of it. 
and I can still feel, I don't feel like my, my child was that happy when I dropped them off at school today. And we can feel all of those things. And I want to say that we still have work that needs to be done. And I've got a few examples here. And I wanted to give some, some real life examples because before I go into those, I think that sense of those old stories of A, selling something, it's sleazy, it's inappropriate, um, it's not respectful, it's all of these things. The thing is, if you show up and you sell and you continue your business, we spread this wealth around. We help people to do the thing. And secondly, people are assuming that selling is a sleazebag thing to do. And actually, it's not. There were so many things that I bought last week and it gave me so much joy to actually buy the thing. I joined this course that I've been wanting to join for ages and I've been doing it every day and it just feels really great. And also, people need what you have to offer right now. So some examples. If you are throwing your back out, if you've thrown your back out and you can't get out of bed and you need a physio or you need an osteopath or you need somebody to sort you out and you are a single parent and you still need to take your children to, um, to school that day, you want to find what you want to be able to find on Google so you can get your back sorted as soon as possible. If you can't lift your baby up and you're the only one who's responsible, yes, you can be in dis deep respect that something big has happened in the world, but also you still need to be able to get on with your day. I remember with Oscar, I had him nearly seven years ago and he was a big baby. He was nine pounds 10. And there is this assumption that around the two week mark, and this is not a medical thing, but this is sort of what I've heard. They um, get back up to their birth weight. And of course, Oscar, when he came out, like, whoa, here we go. He dropped loads of weight and he didn't put on any weight. Um, he didn't get back up to his birth weight, rather, for 35 days. And literally every day or every other day, I was in with this such lovely woman, like helping me supporting me weighing him and like we were celebrating each couple of grand like do you think and she's like no I still can't sign you off I can't do that had those services been closed I would have been in dire straits with my baby like trying to keep his weight up trying to do all of those things the anxiety and the stress and all of that was so much um yeah too much I think about homeschooling I think about those parents who still had to carry on, but yet they had people in the background. I think about those um, play specialists, those people that um, were able to entertain children and show people. I always think about my friend um, Claire from Play Hooray, um, that she shows you like, just take this thing from the kitchen cupboard and put it with this and it's a toy or you could do this. If they'd said, well, I can't show up and I'm not going to because it's rude, because it's a pandemic, we've seen this pattern before. And yet we still need the things that we need to have. Finally, I want to say is that you can do this your way, whatever it might need to happen. So yes, small businesses may be altering the way that they speak about things today. They may have a reshuffle of their content. They may um, close when the funeral is, or they may put a different signature in their emails, in their subject line, whatever it might be. But please remember that you are not the same as a big business. And so you can do things your way. And you really must. Because just to give you a little rundown, to end with. When people talk about self-development, when people talk about coaching, when people talk about making a change, they talk about it like it's this mermaid moment. Like I came out of the water, my hair was perfect, I felt alive, I felt glorious, I had an epiphany. And for most people that I have coached over the last 10 years, a thousand people plus, they are not coming to me when they feel in that moment. 
they know in their hearts of hearts of like, right, I've, right, I've got to sort this out. It's that kind of energy. And so it could be those moments where, and these are all things that I've, that have happened. So people have perhaps emailed me on Boxing Day because they knew on Christmas Day that their marriage was no longer. And so they knew very quickly that they were going to have to change the way that they worked and lived because they knew that they were going to build themselves up for a different kind of family setup. I get emails on bank holidays, always, and people saying, I can't do this anymore. I, I built myself up to this bank holiday and this day off and actually I've just got this dread because I'm living a life that I don't want to have. I get emails, I get messages in the middle of the night because I know there are parents up with their children or up with their own anxiety and thinking, I don't know how I'm going to make my bills. I don't, I don't know where to go or I feel so overwhelmed, I don't know what's next for me. And I want to say that so often it's not this mermaid moment. It's the Alton Towers moment. Have you ever seen those when you've been on a roller coaster? I am always that person at the front, like, ah! like screaming for dear life, backed into a corner, having an ugly cry down a radiator going, I don't, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what this is all about. I don't know how to make moves, etc. So even if you're thinking that your next steps might look polished and lovely and you'll know when, Maybe there's something now where you're like, I'm just going to explore this. And it doesn't have to be where you jump into the cold pool right up to your neck. You can start to dip your toe in. And I often look at those because I walk a lot or run a lot on Hampstead Heath. And there's always people swimming in the lakes. And there are some people, they've got the dressing gown. They've got the whole thing. Is it a dressing gown? A dry robe thing. And like they're in, they're um, submerged. They're in the whole experience. They've got their flask. They've got their their tribe and yet there's some people who are just walking around they're just sussing it they're like oh what's happening over all right okay it's a cold water swim it's good for you is it they're asking those sorts of questions they're asking those sorts of questions and for me that still means that they're in it that still means that they're on that spectrum of making changes making moves so yes to summarize be aware be mindful Check in with what feels good to you. Be responsive. But ultimately, please keep doing what you're doing. Please. Because we need you, your story, your circumstance, your background, your point of view to make this world a better place. I'm going to leave it there. Lots of love. Bye.